Now we've finished casting off, we're going to make the fringe and I thought you might like to know how to do that. I'm going to put three 18 inch pieces of yarn into each cast on stitch or cast off stitch as it is now. To do that I'm going to use a piece of cardboard half the width of the yarn I want to cut. So in this case this is nine inches wide. I have put a dotted mark down the center and I'm going to wind the yarn around the cardboard like this all the way you will calcula calculate beforehand how much yarn you need I'm not pulling it tight but it's not loose either just keep an even tension on it slide them down to make sure you have enough space to get them all on so you get the idea I'm going to carry on winding these and then come back again once I'm ready to cut it here is the card now has been fully wrapped with the yarn you can still see the black marks either end and we're going to cut along that line I just want to mention mine is very bulky I've wrapped over and over um, that increases the length of the yarn when it's cut so bear that in mind it will have a varied finish varied lengths if you don't want that then make sure that you wrap singly then cut it then wrap again or use a much longer piece of cardboard it's up to you which way you do put the tip of your scissors under the yarn it's pretty tough stuff to cut when it's set like that isn't it? it is yes but you can see how it's springing out but it doesn't matter to me if there's a slight variation so that's why if you want them to be precise do make sure that you do a single layer and there they are there are all the strands ready to be put into my fringe does that look lovely? ok next stage Right, now working from the wrong side of your throw, look for the first stitch and here is the cast off edge, I've trimmed it to be half the length of one of these strands so it's actually going to be the same length, I'm going to incorporate that so we don't have to do any um, weaving in at the ends. I'm going to work in this bottom half of the casting on chain but I'm working from the wrong side because I want the nicer side of the knot to be seen from the right side so the first stitch with your the wrong side toward you pick up the number of strands that you've selected as being what you need put the ends together fold it in half put your crochet hook into the first stitch put the strands over at the halfway point pull it through pull the strands through hold on to the knot so it doesn't slip and your length doesn't change and pull it up so you can see I've got that variation you could always trim them afterwards I suppose but I want that varied appearance 
And there we are. This is what I mean about the nicer side of the knot showing. It's like the difference between a plain stitch and a pearl stitch. We all have our favorite sides that we, we like. That, for me, is the nicer side of the knot. And that is the undesirable side. But, of course, my deliberate mistake, I should have included the cast off edge in that knot. There we are. So that one's going to be a little bit chunkier. So, there's the first one in the first stitch. Now we're going to select the second stitch. Put the crochet hook in. Just move these out of the way a bit so I can pick up three easily. Pick up three ends. Match up the ends so you've got your halfway point. Put that onto the crochet hook, pull it through. Keep hold of it all the time because you want to keep that halfway point constant. See, I'm still holding on. Pick up the front part of it, slip it over. It's just a, a normal crochet stitch. And now at this point, you let go, pick it up immediately, and pull up the knot. And there's our second. Find your next stitch, the third. Put the crochet hook in. Pick up three strands. Fold them in half. Put the hook in. Pull the strands through. And finish the knot. That's a lot of yarn you have to use for the fringe. It is, it's surprising. <laughs> I, I haven't weighed it actually, I should have done. I should have weighed it to determine just how much of the finished item is in the fringe. But it is a lot. Now I was I was very surprised the first time I made one of these at how much yarn I had to spin for the fringe. So do those of you, you know, intending to do this, do bear that in mind. It takes a lot. Well, I just r calculated it roughly in my head, and as you said, it's 35 stitches across the end. Yes. So that's 70 stitches you're going to be putting tassels on, is that right? Yes. So 70 stitches and three strands per stitch. Yes. So 210 strands, and each strand is 18 inches long. That's right. That's 315 feet. That's a lot of yarn. It is, it is. <laughs> and of course, uh, when we're spinning, we can use our nitty noddy um, to measure that. So the nitty noddy you made is actually um, two yards, isn't it's it? Six feet, yes. Yes. So I know when I'm spinning and then plying, I know by how many wraps, how, what footage I've created. But it is important to calculate it because it's a terrible... Um, disappointment if you get to the end of the project what you think is the end and you haven't got enough fibre we don't have that problem <laughs> we have rather a lot of fibre but that's not the same for everyone we still have to catch a llama and shearer though <laughs> <laughs> yes Talking of llamas, it's just. Oh, one of our beauty queens. One of our beauty queens is just. That's Baboon. She doesn't belong to us, she's staying with us. Um, she and Gypsy are staying with us to keep Mooney company. Mooney is Baboon's mother, and she's 21, and she's come to us for a little bit of. Um, Constant attention. A bit of healing. Yes. And uh, it is 
I'm told that Baboon is considered to be the perfect llama. That's what one of the judges said about her. The perfect llama? Yes, in terms of confirmation, um, presence. She certainly has presence. She's very haughty, isn't she? Don't you get the feeling that she's usually looking down her nose at us? I thought that was just her markings. Anyway, back to the... Uh yes, that spotty coat. It'd be an interesting yarn, wouldn't it? Variegated. Yes. Well, I hope you've got the idea that it, it, you don't have to use one of these mega crochet hooks. Of course, you may not have one. Um, you can do it with your fingers. Let me just do that to show you. Fold it in half in just the same way. I'm not sure how the knot's going to work out because I haven't done it this way. The crochet hook changes it. Yes, right. So. If you're doing it with your fingers and you want the side of the knot showing that I've shown you, you will actually doing, do it from the other side. A bit cack handed here, but that's so that you can see what's going on. You see, so there's the, the knotted bar, the same as those. The crochet hook twists it. Let me do another one with my fingers to uh, show you how I did it. It's getting a little bit breezy now. Muddling the strands up. Let the ends meet from the right side, push them through, and then pull your strands through. And you see it's consistent. We've got that double knot on the back. That has a nice effect on that last row of knitting it on does, the finish. It does, yes, yes. Thank you for mentioning that. That's um, why I like to use the cable cast on. Actually the, uh, the simplified long tail cast on will give that effect as well. They both produce this nice chain and the cast off, the simple cast off. By simplified cast on, I mean the one where I use my thumb instead of a needle. Right. It's just a nice series of V's along the edge. To yes. Yes, I like that. Accentuate the edge. Yes, I like that. And it, it does, it complements the V's there, doesn't it? The next video that I'll be showing you, or will be showing you, is how to use continental style knitting for mega knitting. I'm very right-handed, so I've had to work hard to be able to master it. But there is a particular technique to doing it with the hooks of mega knitting, which simplifies the whole thing. So I have managed it. Anyway, I shall be um, showing you how to do that. But until then, um, from Lynn and David at Fiber Arts Bootcamp, we look forward to seeing you.